Hey, I'm Chris, and I am okay at FMC. Um, I don't know any advanced FMC methods, and I'm not really um, motivated to learn any right now, so I actually just use CFOP and a bunch of really weird improvisation on top of that, and sometimes that creates solutions which a few people have told me are rather interesting, so I thought I'd make a little series showing off some of my more interesting unorthodox attempts I've had in the past. So this one might be my favorite. It is a 42 mover, which uses a U-perm and a center permutation algorithm at the same time after solving the cube with offset centers. Uh, so let's get started here. Um, in the description you will find the scramble as well as a link to alg.cubing.net detailing each move and a short explanation um, for each move as it occurs. So here's the scramble. Z, Y prime. Uh, you'll notice right off the bat we have this white, green, red pseudo 2x2x1 two by two by on the wrong side. So it was a little discouraging to see that. Like, man, I'm going to have to break this up, won't I? And then I see it's even more discouraging when I do a U prime F prime U um, to actually put in the third edge of that um, pseudo block to create a 2x2x2 two by two by two pseudo block. But then I think, I wonder if there's a way to permute the centers on a cube um, such that they line up in this exact same way on the cube right now with orange on white yellow on green, and green on red. So I'll grab another cube, and I find out that M prime E prime M E happens to do exactly that, as you can see right here. See, they match. Um, so what I could just do is solve the cube uh, with the wrong centers uh, relative to this 2 by 2 by 2 pseudo block, and then just permute the centers at, at the end. And the center permutation algorithm um, that one would use in FMC, because you know you can't use M, E, or S moves, has moves all over the cube, so surely it is bound to cancel with at least one or two moves. And so I decide I think this path is viable. So I go ahead and create this block, and I do an X2 and a Y prime to put it here in the bottom back left. Uh, and we will be doing white cross, and white cross is the same, it turns out. Um, on in this orientation uh, because that's you know all that's moved around are the centers so the same goes with F2L F2L pairs are the same so you can see right off the bat I have this white orange blue free pair uh, and so to hide that out of the U layer to prevent it from getting messed up with any nonsense in the U layer and to help orient this white orange cross piece which actually belongs here but it's just flipped around I do an F prime and then to get this orange white cross piece into the top layer for uh, for placement down here. I do an R, and as you can see, that creates this white, blue, red pair up here in the in the top back right. Um, and it is actually just one move away from creating this pseudo block right here um, of a, a two by two by one pseudo block of white, blue, and red. Uh, however, I don't perform that move, of course. Uh, but it turns out that this cross piece belongs here, so I do a U two to put it into place, and by doing an F. That aligns the white-blue-red pair with the white-blue edge, and on the correct side as well. See, on the on the uh, final state of the cube, which I want before center permutation, the block belongs here, and instead it's here. So I could just do an R two to place it uh, to place it down here where it belongs, but I can just do an R prime and a U prime to put this pair in place as well to get this one by two by three pseudo block, which belongs right here. And then I do an R2, so I can perform an F2 and place the white orange edge into its correct spot. And an R in order to place that final block, and that gives me three pairs and the cross as well. Uh, and so then conveniently here in the back I have a free white, green, orange pair, which just goes here. And in terms of the last layer, I thought it was best to do a U prime F, U prime F prime to put it in. And that gives us all of F2L. So I don't know if I'll allow, so for this one I just happen to go with... Uh, R, B, U, B prime, U prime, R prime, which is just um, F sexy F prime, but on the right side instead. Then I do an R prime and I get a left anti soon. So it's going to be L prime, U2, L, U, L prime, U, L, just like that. Now, I don't actually perform an L at the end because what we get in the end is a U perm, and the first move in the U perm I'm going to use is an L2, so I could just perform an L perm to get there. But I'm not going to do that quite yet because I have to explain a few things here. So, uh, yep, just like that. So, the U, uh, the U perm algorithm I end up using is this one. It is a U B perm, and it is notable because it only has nine moves. So, it's, um, it's not quite like the 11 move U perms. Uh, this is also known as the slice move U perm because there's a funny way you can do it that's very quick and looks really odd. Uh, so, this is the one I happen to use, and it already assumes that the, uh, that the edges are on this side here as they are in the, in the state of the cube right here. Uh, and then also I'd like to bring up the center permutation algorithm I use in this case. 
And so it's just going to be FB prime, LR prime, UD prime, FB prime. Now what that does is because it doesn't use any M, E, or S moves, the centers stay in place. All that moves are the pieces that go around it. Um, and so what it ends up doing is moving the U side pieces to the F side, the F side pieces to the L side, and the L side pieces to the U side, as, uh, as denoted right here in this little, this little mark right here. Um, and another way you can think of it is that it actually performs a ZY to the non-center pieces while keeping the center pieces in place. So these are the two algorithms I'm going to use. Um, now the way I perform them, I happen to insert the center permutation algorithm in an interesting spot. So this is the beginning of the U perm right here. Um, see, it should start with an L2, but of course, because I already had an L prime done on the cube, um, I could just start off with an L prime instead. So it's L2, U prime, F prime, B, L2, F, B prime. Now, I actually stop the U perm here and begin the center permutation algorithm because this F and this F and this B prime and this B prime um, can actually combine into F2 and B2, just like that. So that's, a, that's two cancellations right there. And then I continue with the center algorithm, L, R prime, U, D prime, F, B prime. Uh, now, the thing is, I would um, I go back to the U perm at this point um, because you know the the pieces just move around the cube um, in a uh, in a manner where they stay in the same position relative to each other, so it doesn't affect the U perm. But what it does affect is the placement of the pieces on the cube, of course, um, depend um, re regarding what side they are on. So I don't just continue the U perm as normal down here. I actually have to translate the U and the L to F and U because again that is the sides that the pieces move to when I perform the center permutation algorithm. So the U prime and the L2 to finish off the U perm become an F prime and a U2. And so then this F prime in the U perm actually cancels with the F in the center permutation algorithm. So there we go. And then the L2 becomes a U2, of course. Um, and so let's perform the U perm and center permutation algorithm at the same time. So it's going to be L2, U prime, F prime, B, L2, then we go to the center permutation algorithm, F2, B2, L, R prime, U, D prime, I skip the F because it's canceled, B prime, U2, and that has performed both the center permutation algorithm and the U perm at the same time, and what would have been a U, a UF on the regular cube after the center permutation algorithm, because U has moved to F, has become an F for the AUF, and so I just performed that. And that solves the cube, and there you go. That is 42 moves.